Pack your bags, people, because today on Budget Lawns, we're taking a little vacation. budget lawns on the beach ah speaking of the beach I actually brought it to my house this summer because uh, there's no room for vacation in the budget not with a, another addition to the family and our boy that was just born a couple weeks ago we've got to get creative we have to use our imaginations and this summer we're dreaming of the beach but like I said I did bring it to my house in particular to my front yard. You've heard me mention in a couple of my other videos that I did my first sand leveling project this summer and I've been promising you that we would talk a little bit about it, the steps I took, and the results I've seen. Well today is that day and I figured what better way to talk about it than with our toes buried in the sand. Uh, and it's raining outside again. You know how much I like that free rain. So let's move on to my first sand leveling project that I did coming up oh right at four weeks ago. First, let's kind of go through the steps that I took. Uh, we began things by starting to bring the height of cut down. I have a Bermuda front lawn. I was mowing it somewhere around two and a half to three inches. So before I put any sand on it, I started slowly bringing it down a couple weeks before. I cut it, and then I threw down just a simple generic 10 10 10 fertilizer and watered it in real heavily that evening. I wanted to to kind of jumpstart some growth down at the soil. So I let that sit for a couple days. It was go time. I woke up early that morning and there was no turning back. I lowered the blade on the mower and I just scalped the mess out of it. Took it down as low as I've ever taken it. I went as low as I could on my rotary mower without getting into the dirt. Somewhere around an inch and three quarters, but my lawn was so bumpy it was mowing further down than that. As soon as I finished, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? It was a mess. I kind of hit that little freak out moment for just a second, but I knew it was something that had to be done. It was all part of the process. Everything was going to work out in the end. So we cut it down really, really low. It was time to start throwing down the sand. Got a local place here in town that sells mulch, gravel, sand. So I headed out that way and ended up getting four scoops of sand. Each scoop is about a half a yard, so four scoops, two yards, two tons. And all I've got in my front yard is about 1,500 square feet, but it was that bad, it really needed that much. So I started taking the sand from the bed of my truck, obviously, wheelbarrow on it, scattering it around the lawn, and I'm an OCD kind of guy, so my piles were just perfect, lined up, same size, looking real sharp. I don't know why I felt the need to do that. It was about to be bulldozed over anyways. So we started with piles of sand all over the lawn. After that, we took a landscape rake and a garage push broom and started just spreading those piles out, getting us a, a canvas to work on aside from those large piles all over the front yard. After I got the, the piles pushed out, it was time to take on what turned out to be the most grueling task of the entire process. Forget the, the shoveling into the wheelbarrow and the the wheelbarrowing all the piles of sand around. I thought that having the drag mat was gonna make things easier, which it did, don't get me wrong, but it was still tough. I am not kidding you. I didn't know that I was gonna do this project this year because I really didn't have it in the budget to spend $100 on a drag mat. But while in Texas visiting my wife's family earlier this summer, I decided to check out the Facebook Marketplace and see if I could find one for cheap. And lo and behold, there was a guy in the area that was selling brand new four by three drag mats for only 30 bucks. I dropped everything I was doing and went and got a drag mat immediately. And I'm so glad I did. Even though it was tough, I'm so glad I had it. So I started out with the four by three drag mat and just started dragging it all over the yard every which way I could with no added weight to it. But I realized real quickly that I needed something on top of the drag mat to really push that sand down into the turf 
and get a better spread on it. And fortunately, I had a 36 pound bag of fertilizer in the garage and that did just the trick. I went and grabbed that bag of fertilizer, tossed it on there, grabbed that mat by the rope from behind and just went after it. And I did that for probably an hour, hour and a half until I just couldn't see any more sand bearing itself down into the Bermuda grass. At that point, I was ready to give up anyway. I figured, you know what, the haze in the barn, I've done everything I can possibly do. It's time to throw some water down on this thing and call it a day. But before I did that, I had to do something with that bag of fertilizer. Yeah, I'd already thrown down the 10, 10, 10 a couple days before, but I wanted to get something on top as well. And of course, just like most of you have experienced this summer, malorganite is dang near impossible to find. So I have come across, and I hope you have too, this ProCare Natural that you can find at Lowe's. I think I bought it uh, for around $13 a bag. Very similar to the malorganite, just a little bit lower on its percentages. I think it was a 430 instead of a 540, but still, nonetheless, very comparable. I tossed that down before I got the sprinklers running. Got a good, nice spread of some organic fertilizer on top just to fuel it just a little bit more. And that was it for me, folks. I threw the sprinklers out, hit it hard the rest of the evening, and then did the same thing every single morning for about six days or so. Because about that time, we had a really hot, dry stretch in our area, but I was pretty thankful for those conditions. That Bermuda just took off. I could not believe it, how fast it came back in. From looking like a straight up beach to back to a green, lush lawn in really no time. Here are a few pictures of what things looked like seven days after the project. I just let it go, watered it, let it grow. I think all I did in that first seven days was edge to kind of clean things up and make it look a little bit better. You know, it's almost like going to the barber and just getting your sideburns and around your neck trimmed and make it look like you got a haircut, but you really didn't. I didn't get my first mow in until right at 10 days. I really was pleased with how quickly things were progressing. And then by about two weeks in, we're knocking right on that door being close to being back to a full lawn, but we've still got a few little spots as you've seen in previous videos that are a little bit rough and still filling in. We've got more rain and even more hot weather coming. Just the right conditions for that Bermuda to take off again. And here we are at four weeks and it looks fantastic. I will say one thing though, about 90% of the front lawn got taken care of and I solved a lot of problems, but that other 10% few spots either didn't get better or a few spots either got worse. This is going to be a progress. This isn't going to be an overnight type deal. It's not in my budget to go out and spend an arm and a leg on sand just for those four scoops. I spent about a hundred bucks and that was all I could take. But I just keep telling myself it's better than it was last year and then when we do it again next year it'll be even better and the same thing the year after that and the year after that. It wouldn't be any fun if we did it all at one time and didn't have something else to look forward to. Alright, let's wrap this up. In summation, really happy with the results. Would go through the exact same process next time, but not till next year. Because I'm not going to lie, that was hard, hard work. You better get your mind right if you're going to take on that project. Because it's going to kick your honey. Till then, I'm going to nestle my honey down in this chair and just listen to the waves crash on the imaginary beach and try to relax hard as that will be. We'll see you next time on Budget Loans. Sorry about that. I had to leave my beach chair for a second. Reality just set in. I'm at home. I'm not on the beach. I got a two-year-old screaming and crying and throwing a fit. Doesn't want to take a nap. What can you do?